God, some, there's someone in there that died. I see a skull and bones. Jeez, wow. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. Hey, everybody. As you can see, I have a fox in my house. I'm thinking about naming him. Maybe Sleepy, because, well, there you go. He just curls up and he goes to sleep at the drop of a hat. Looks like I have some mail at the post office. So it's a beautiful day here in Patronville. Let's go to the post office. But first, I want to show you this this house, my my neighbor's house. I can't remember if I've shown you this before. My memory's not what it used to be. But what this style, what this type of home is called is a kasba. And interestingly enough, the, the builder, his Minecraft username is kasba. Now, I was talking to him, and he tells me that a Kasba is a it's a type of North African castle used in places like Morocco and Liberia uh, during the Middle Ages. He said they serve the purpose of like any other type castle, you know, for protection and self-sufficiency. He said in desert environments. Uh, what's he got in here? In desert environments, it was a tremendous sign of power if you had a Kasba. Because that usually meant that you had stores of water and food, and that could allow the Kasba to sustain you for years at a time without outside supplies. There's the post office. We're going to go over there in a few minutes. Now, he couldn't build as large of a Cosba as he wanted to because of the size constraints of the, of the zoning laws here in Patronville. But he did a pretty good representation on a smaller scale. So is this all there is to it? pretty comfy. The, the water feature here is very interesting. We're going to go down. There we go. That was certainly an interesting way to get to the lower chamber. Look at all the 
All of the gold. Wow. And there's a jack-o'-lantern. I, I suspect that is left over from a Halloween event. But yeah, this is pretty, pretty cool. Two sets of doors, one on each side. Artwork. Let's go down the stairs. There's another jack o' lantern. Ooh, that's a nice aquarium. Deploy more fish. If you push the button, I bet they come out of that. Dispenser. Let's try it. Yeah. It popped out a fish. There's another. So you can just sit in this chair and watch the fish swim around. Very peaceful like. It's a very nice touch. I really like that. So let's go in here. This appears to be the sleeping quarters. There's a banner. Um, I might be invading his privacy by rifling around in his uh, chest. I don't think he would mind. Yeah, this is a pretty neat place. It's very, uh, that aesthetic. Uh, the, the look of it is pretty cool. Let's try to go back up. Alright. That's a, definitely an interesting entryway to the main house. So there you have it, a Cosba built by Cosba. Let's run down here to the post office and get my mail. Everyone that plays in my realm has a mailbox right here in the post office. This is where we can send each other uh, messages. And I've got one from Izzy that says Bowling Alley. <laughs> Happy New Year's. I wanted to go bowling one last time in this decade, but realized Patronville doesn't have an alley. I rectified that. Head on over to the Underground Alley in the Underground Village if you want to. It's right next to the McDonald's. Well, let's go to the Underground Village, which is a shopping center. Uh, it's a shopping center. I was looking at that Xerox machine. I'm not sure when we got that. 
But yeah, the underground village is like a shopping center with bars and restaurants and a racetrack. We're going to take the subway to get there. Uh, we get to the subway by going underneath City Hall right here. There's a community message boards. And many of you have seen the videos that show some of the things that we have here in Patronville. That goes to the Eastern Ravine. And that direction is the five-star ravine that Henry McDougall Handel discovered. We're going to... Okay, so we went down the elevator. Here's the... All the different offices for the different uh, city, city positions. And that goes to the underground village. So let's get a mine cart. Yeah, we call it a subway, but obviously it's just a, a mine cart. <laughs> that saves the city a lot of money, though. Yeah, so the underground village is, it's not too far away, but, uh, and we're, we're almost there. far enough away that I wouldn't want to have to walk. Uh-oh. We're going backwards. I need to jump out. There was already a mine cart there, so when we arrived, we kind of bumped into it. We started going the opposite direction. Now, down those steps is a mining outpost. It's for this mine. It's the Underground Village Mining Outpost. But we want to go down to the food court. So, right down these steps, and we're in the food court. Some of you have probably seen the, the bakery underground. Here's Granny's cookie jar. There's just some table and chairs to sit at and eat your cookies and cakes. There's an information desk. And we have Tom and Joe working today. There's a sushi bar that has never opened. I really don't think it ever will. And here is uh, the underground village, uh, the drunken sheep, that's a, a bar. Here's a sushi bar. 
here's the McDonald's. He's at the bowling alley, the new bowling alley's next to the McDonald's. I've never been in here before. This is the first time I've ever seen it, so we're seeing it together here. There's the, the horse racing track. But the entrance to the bowling alley looks pretty neat. And here's where you get your, you rent your bowling shoes. Uh, very hygienic. <laughs> Sweaty bowling shoes. And there's some snacks that you can buy. And then here appears to be the bowling alley. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Great job, Izzy. This is cool. But it's Minecraft, so I don't think it's functional. There's a jukebox. Oops. I accidentally took the CD out of it. There's some music. Ooh. The baritone saxophone. Pretty neat. It's got the it's got the gutters and everything. Let's turn the music off. That's enough. Oops. I was going to say that's enough of that. I accidentally uh, destroyed the jukebox. Let's just replace it with one. I wonder if he would mind if I maybe put a chest right here. That way we can put the CD in it. I'm going to have to get rid of this stone and put a, uh, a purple block. I'm not sure what he's got there. I'm not sure what kind of block that is. It's kind of a purple color. No, that one's too dark. But I don't want to use up too much of, of this uh, show and tell time so let's just drop the cds in and be done with it but it still looks pretty good knowing izzy he'll come down there and fix it gutter ball Do any of you guys like to bowl? Tell me in the comments. Uh, bowling's pretty fun. I've never done any serious bowling, but I've been to a bowling alley a few times. Is 
See you later. The guy's name is Stuart. Man, it was pretty neat. Not a whole lot going down. And not a whole lot going on here at the underground village. Let's just run over here and get back into the cart we came in on. There we go. Up to speed. Yeah, we're just kind of trucking along. Up the hill, right turn. Coming up to Patronville. There's the Patronville station. Let's jump out. And let's uh, go up the elevator. One's down. One side is up. Whoops. And we're back to street level. Here's the current map of Patronville. You can see the city walls and you can see the, the Patronville Lake, the baseball stadium toward the top. Over here is a, that's a big sailing ship in the harbor. That's like a, a wharf over there. And I've been on the big sailing ship. I can't remember if I showed you guys the ship. Cosba, you know, we just we just toured his his uh, his house, his his Cosba. But what do you say we leave Izzy some mail? Let's get a let's get an envelope here, a piece of paper. We're just gonna type out a nice message. Bowling alley looks great.
Schritt. It's a wonderful addition to the city. And we'll just sign it. Give it a name. Bowling Alley. And we'll drop it in his mailbox. And he'll check his mail and he'll see it. So let's run down here and let's see that that light is off now that I've got my mail. Let's run down here and get my horse lightning and let's let's ride him over to the harbor so we can take a look at the the galleon the the big sailing ship that Cosma built. Hey, there's Lab's corporate headquarters. Uh, it's a spooky place. So this is one of the city stables. And if you play in my realm, if you're a citizen of Patronville, you have a horse. And you get to name it. There's Tetson, owned by Pink Thief, who owns the Drunken Sheep the Bar. And Pink Thief also owns the, the city, the, the hospital. She's, she's the doctor. Anyway, here is Lightning. We'll just gallop. Yeah, gallop down here. The gate is up. But here's the the lever to lower it right there. Now the gate is down. Up here is a fairly recent building. Inside of that building is a Zeppelin. Some of you may have seen the video where we toured the Zeppelin. Whoa, whoa boy, whoa, whoa. Not sure what his problem was. What is this on the left? That's a trap door to the city caves. Wow. And there's the, the galleon. What a ship. Nick Cosby told me that creating the the galleon. Let's run in here for just a second. That's just a rest stop. Yeah, there's a bed. Man, he told me that creating. The galleon was kind of like a uh, a personal creative challenge. It wasn't his first attempt to build a sailing ship. He had built a a smaller ship, a frigate, in his uh, his personal survival world. 
But here in my realm, he built this wonderful, huge galleon. This is an interesting area. It's like a uh, like a pirate town. And there's the. I think the sun is just starting to come up. Yeah, I'm glad you got to see this at night. It's pretty cool. I could never have built that, not in a million years. He said the way he built it was he he made a a. Uh, kind of made a, uh, a cross-shaped wood structure, you know, to sort of give him an idea of the, of the length and the width that the ship would be. And he looked up some, he said he looked up some pictures of, uh, of uh, Spanish galleons on the internet, and then he made like a, a basic curve uh, connecting each end uh, to give them a basic idea, uh, you know, of how the hull wa was going to look. So he built a hull and filled it up with stuff. And he got that done, and it was time to do the mast. Pretty good swim. Now, if I can get up there. Now, what do I do? How do I get onto this ship? Yeah, I know, I know, this is creative. I can just fly onto the ship. I, I understand that, but I was trying to figure out how to do it. How to do it on my own without the help of flying. I may have to resort to flying. Okay. I flew. Wow. I've been on this ship a couple of other times and I'm amazed every time I every time I come out this way. Look at the cannons. Yeah, this is the front of the ship, the bow. And there's one of the one of the cargo holds, I guess. All the work that went into this. I'm not sure how long it took him. Cosmo, if you 
See this video, tell us in the comments how long did it take you to build to build this. There's the helm where you steer the ship. Now I'm standing at the very back. Let's run up here. There's a crow's nest up there. I think the captain's quarters, the entrance is down here. Yep, captain's quarters. This is a good sized room where the captain and his officers would sit around here and study the map. Nice chairs. And sleeping quarters. And I'm not sure what you call this. It's like, you know, we're at the, the back of the ship, uh, the stern. What's that sign? The Narvia owned by Cosbo. Sweet. Let's get a better view of it from back here. Very impressive. Around, shut the gates. What's in this chest? Got some rum. <laughs> several, several bottles of rum in that chest. Pirates do like the rum. Let's find the way down into the into the hull of the ship. Because I don't remember going down there before. Here's some stairs. Table. Let's run around here before we go down. Looks like a kitchen. There's a look like a keg of rum. Okay, let's go down the stairs. Cruise quarters. Okay. Each man just has a sword. one of the cannons. You see the fuse, the fuse sticking up out of the top. There's the barrel out there. So this thing has some firepower. Hey look, fish tank, food. It's a good way to keep fresh fish. Catch them, put them in the, the well. Yeah, they got a lot of 
lot of supplies on this ship. Look at all that sugar. All these cannons. What is... I guess that's a target. Yep, there's a crossbow. What do you say we take a shot? I guess the... Pirates had to keep their skills up, you know, in practice. Well, I destroyed it. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I shouldn't have done that. Let's put this back. Cosmo, if you see this video, uh, I'm sorry. Can you <laughs> can you replace the target? Yeah, lots of water, fresh water. So oh, there's another floor down below, so let's go down one more deck. There's where we came down the first time. Apples. Yeah, there's a lot of room, lots of supplies. Gold. It's all strapped down so that it can't shift. Emeralds and diamonds. Barrels and chest of gold. There's a lot of money sitting down here. Iron. Wow. This ship really has some some hauling capacity. There's another deck down. There's some steps. And what's that say? Armory. Guess they keep all the weapons in here. Oh yeah. Yep, all the weapons. And let's run over here. Brig. Well, the brig is, well, that's a jail for insubordinate uh, sailors. What? My God, some, there's someone in there that died. I see a skull and bones. Jeez, wow. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. You definitely do not want to be a prisoner in the brig of a sailing ship. Oh, someone someone passed away in that one too. There's their bones. 
Not sure what that chair is for. Maybe it's a, a place for the jailer to sit. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting to see that. really makes a person think. Mamas don't let your sons grow up to be pirates. I think we've seen pretty much everything. I don't see any more uh, stairs going down to any lower decks. We might be below the waterline right now, I don't know. Looks like it's night again. He did a fine job of this, building this hull. He said when it came time to do the mast, he had to try to figure out how tall to make them. And in his research, he noticed that the mast were about as tall as the ship was long. He also had to decide if he wanted to have the sails uh, blowing in the wind or folded up. As you can see, they are blowing in the wind. I think we can go up the, this mast. He said when he built this ship, uh, because there's a lot of thunderstorms in this area, that lightning actually burned his sails down twice. And he eventually put a clear glass uh, ceiling it's up there pretty high in the sky, but it it keeps the rain off of the ship. You can't see it, it's glass. But it also kept the lightning from burning down the sails. I never would have dreamed that, but he, that's what he says. So. Pretty amazing ship. It looks fantastically real. It's loaded down with a with a type of cargo you would expect to see, and it literally looks like it could like it could set sail. Ooh, I think he needs to put some. Uh, some sailors on this ship. Liven it up a little bit. Some, some real rough looking guys. Yeah, he did a fine job. Let's take one last look. Let's just kind of we'll fly over here and take a look at this pirate town. This is the wharf. This is where ships unload cargo. And this looks like where they might, uh, fishing boats probably come in and sell, and sell their, uh, what they caught to the fish market guys. You could buy fresh fish right there. Here's a lighthouse. That's pretty neat. 
what is there? Here's some structures that make up this little this little village, this this little harbor town. What's this? Lots of doors. Bedroom. Chest. Bedroom. I guess the sailors need a place to sleep when they when they come to port. There's a, a balcony. Okay, it's like a little hotel. Probably cost you a shilling to stay there. Couple of pieces of eight. What's in the barrels? I guess you can rent a boat or a fishing pole there. Boy, this place looks spooky. What a crazy looking pyramid. Dare we go up? Maybe looks like some place sacrifices would well, it's like one big bedroom. You know, I bet this is like Blackbeard's bedroom, like the head pirate. This is the port where the pirate ship is like its home port. Been the head pirate, the captain of the ship. This is his place. I guess that's why it looks like a skull. You know, a skull and crossbones is kind of like this symbol of pirates. Well, that's impressive. I guess, I guess Cosba built that. He probably built this whole, this whole uh, pirate town. I feel like I'm missing something. There's got to be some something secret about this. Like there, is there an entrance to get into the pyramid? What is inside of that pyramid? Yeah, we saw the great big bedroom, but there's got to be more to it than that. Why is there a sheep standing on the pirate skull nose. Let's fly around here. Wow. Look at all the all the life. All the sheep. And 
That's amazing. Never would have guessed I'd see this many sheep. I think there's a llama there too. A lot of snow. We're in a high uh, altitude. Well, if there's something in that pyramid, I do not know how to get into it. It's like a, a mystery, a secret, perhaps. What is that? It's a strange block just kind of hanging there. We may never know if there's anything inside the base of that pyramid. This is probably another building for the for the, the pirates to sleep in. It's definitely a lot of work. A lot of work went into this. I see the doors to get into the lighthouse. Let's go up. And let's keep going up. All the way to the top. Oh, there's the pyramid. Nice view from up here. There's the ship. There's the light. Very nice. I remember when, you know, none of this was here, and all these, all these players came along and they built all this. You know, what is this? North Shore and the Drunken Sheep Pub. Let's find my horse. I think we'll, we'll ride down that way. I'm trying to figure out where lightning got up. There he is. There he is. What a good boy. Let's jump up on. Let's head down this way. The drunken sheep. 
pub has always been suspect to me because I was there one time and I saw strange pipes that led from the building of the pub into the ocean. I couldn't figure out if they were dumping sewage into the ocean from maybe their bathrooms or something, or whether they were sucking up seawater and selling it as uh, beer. I noticed at the, you know, they have a second location over at the underground, uh, the underground village. And I was reading something inside of that location. They had a, a publication there for anyone to read. It said that uh, contrary to whatever rumor that people have heard, that the drunken sheep does not pollute or use uh, seawater as beer, but but they do get their water from the ocean, and if if you did find seaweed in it, not to worry about it, that it wasn't harmful at all and only contributed to the taste. <laughs> but here is the original location of the drunken sheep. In a case you've never seen it, uh, well, I think lightning will be okay there. We'll just walk over here and take a look. This is a pretty popular place. You can eat outside here. Very colorful. There's the bar. They must be closed right now. Fill up this room with your banner. I don't even know how to create a banner. If I did, I would put one up here, but that's kind of beyond me what's in here. No, oh, this is the storeroom. There's the drunken sheep, Jeb. And there's Harvey the llama. For some reason, that llama's kind of creeping me out. What's in here? Okay, this is the kitchen. Yeah. This is the kitchen. Here's the storeroom. This must be where the... These must be beer dispensers, like big plastic keg type things. Yeah, no, I'm very articulate. <laughs> Keg-like things. But... Oh, Harvey's got the, the way out. He's blocking the way out. Come on, move it. Let's just run past. Slam the door in his face. Let's do it again. What's up here? There's a lot of pink beds. Is this for patrons to the bar that are too drunk to travel home? And maybe they get to stay up there, I don't know.
how do you get out there? I guess you just fly. There's some steps that go up. Okay, there's an upper level where you can dine. And I hear some rain. Now those strange pipes leading into the ocean, well they were back here, but something's different than the way it used to look. I don't know if this city came out and investigated and find them or not, but something does look different. There is one, I guess maybe that was an intake to take water in. And I might be ruining the reputation of this establishment by accusing them of using seawater. as a as a refreshment that they charge money for, I don't know, but but anyway, it's time to get lightning back to the stable if I can find him. He's around here somewhere. Not sure where he got off to. So right now we're in the park. Oh, there he is. I see him. Let's jump the hedge. I guess he's just trying to stay out of the out of the rain by hiding out under this tree, but gallop along through here between the Zeppelin building and the, the baseball the ballpark the ballpark on the left is where the, the Patronville Jazz baseball team plays their home games You know, we looked at Cosba's ship, and we looked at Cosba's house. But over on this side of town, he has a business also. And we're going to take a look at that in the future. Let's put the gate up. I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get with Cosba uh, before I tour his business. Look at that horse. It's upside down. Well, let's ride down here and put my horse away. Let's jump off. Good boy, Lightning. Good boy. We'll see you again. And let's run down here. That's a sunken living room. That's pretty nice.
work life making construction slow. That guy moved away. He's not even a citizen anymore. Here's my house. Let's just run around. Come in the front. So this was kind of a long, a long video, and I'm tired, so it's time for bed. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. So, take one last look out the window. Yeah, you see the Valve Apartments. I'm going to be going over there soon to clear out some uh, squatters that shouldn't be there. But uh, until next time, good night.